in this week, as with the previous, it will be a continuation of the topic about uh, studying and manipulating genomes. I will be uh, repeating some of the concepts that, uh, I, that, that the video showed you from the previous week, but uh, in, this, um, in this lecture, we will just be synthesizing everything. Now, um, as an introduction, so we know, uh, did you know that 99% uh, of your DNA is the same as everyone else? Now, if 99% is the, exactly the same as everyone else, how do we use DNA to, say, identify, uh, as, uh, for example, um, paternity testing? How do we identify paternity? How do we identify a certain blood sample coming from a crime scene as belonging to a certain person? So that. Uh, that way of identification is through what you call the single nucleotide polymorphism, which is just a single, that means just a single base difference found in at least 1% of the population. So this single nucleotide for polymorphisms, although it's just 1%, a measly 1%, it has quite a lasting effect, uh, actually a lifetime effect on us. So these SNPs account for many differences in the way humans look, and in the way our bodies work. For example, uh, some people have a stronger immune system than the others. Some people are more susceptible than others. Uh, the, the dosage of the drug, for example, um, your drug A works well on this person, but that same dosage of the drug doesn't really work that much well on another person. It, 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 uh, it needs a little bit more of that drug or a little bit less of the drug to be able to be at peak of the... Uh, at its optimum um, dosage. So basically, that those differences are accounted for or are believed to be due to your uh, SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms. So actually, this is one of the areas of research that are being well uh, currently hot topic in the areas of research. Now. In order to further study these SNPs, we have commercially available genetic testing kits. They use samples of your DNA and uh, helps determine whether you carry a certain SNP. It's actually, in the market, if you if you Google it around, you will see that there are many um, there are some companies or some uh, some yeah some companies startup companies usually that they are offering kits that uh, that will ask you to or that will allow you to sequence actually not only detect a certain SNP but also sequence your entire genome and you can buy that certain kit if you want to say uh, for the double toe I want to I want to know my DNA so you can buy those kits at uh, if you if you allow the company to use the data from your sample for example they, they are going to use the your the, the, your, the information of your gene so you're, you allow them use of your uh, DNA information, you will be able to buy the services, the sequencing services, or buy the kit at a much lower price than when you want, uh, you don't want to disclose them the information. Because the, the information that we'll get, you will be for research on these SNPs. So uh, why do we need to do research again? It can be used um, in the field of medicine. It can be used by the physicians to determine whether a patient is likely or not likely to, res uh, to respond to a certain drug. Because the currently, how physicians give you dosage is just giving you the statistical average of a certain population. Now, take uh, bear in mind that that well, it's a bell curve. The average, statistical average, is basically a bell curve. It's not guaranteed whether you are in the exact middle, whereas the, the average dosage is just right for you, or you might be on one of those uh, extremes, whereas the average dosage is not appropriate, not exactly not appropriate, but it's not as effective as a very tailored dosage to you. I think St. Luke's is um, looking into this prob particular problem to further enhance or optimize the usage of the drug. For example, the, the you, uh, the, the physician will be able to give you a dosage that is exactly for your body or that is optimum for your specific physiology and not for the rest of the population. So it can also be used to determine risk factors so that um, because again prevention is better than cure. So uh, identifying uh, the risk factors 
will allow you uh, will allow the physicians to watch out for certain um, for certain um, sicknesses or certain disorders that might have uh, an early onset but will manifest symptom the symptoms will manifest a bit much much later and when they do manifest it will be um, far too severe for example cancers uh, heart diseases something like that okay now uh, that's for the, the the genome. Why one of the uh, why do we study some SNPs? Why do we study genome? Now, in order to study the genes and the genomes, we need to be able to manipulate those DNAs and the genes. And I, I believe I already included in a previous video about um, manipulating the genes. I'll just be repeating this uh, the concept here. So, in order to study the genes, we need to create copies of them. So we when we create copies of them, we call them cloning. So, we cl uh, clone is basically uh, an exact copy of a certain DNA strand. So, in order to do that, first we, we need some, um, we need to have some materials. And first of all, that the, the, the most important, one of the most important is the restriction enzymes. The restriction enzymes, they are bacterial enzymes that cut the DNA at specific sites. And we call them restriction sites. So, some of the restriction enzymes will cut the DNA uh, with overhanging single-stranded tails. That means um, they do not cut at the same, uh, for example, remember, DNA is a double strand. So, they do not cut at exactly uh, the same position. For example, uh, let me have the, how do I get, mm -hmm. ah, okay. So I'll have the For example, you have your DNA. It's double stranded. So these are your bases. So restriction enzymes will uh, so most of the restriction enzymes will not cut at the same site. For example, between these two, they will not cut on that. So uh, when they cut at that, you will end up with what you call blunt ends. So exactly the same number of ends that you have. However, most of the restriction sites do not cut at the exact um opposite sides of the certain uh, gene strand. So you have, um, they cut it, so one of them is offset a little bit, for example, like that. So when they when the restriction enzymes cut it like that, you will have what you call an overhang. So the overhang or the, the what uh, what is usually known as sticky ends, it will have something like this. So for example, this is your strand, and then they cut it. So let's say for this one, this is cut in this position oh, okay so i got it uh on the opposite side so uh let's have one overhang is here and the other overhang over there okay so as you can see these regions okay so as you can see sorry these regions here they are um, there, there is unpaired bases here, and then, and then another unpaired bases here, and because they are unpaired, they are free to look for pairs. So basically, they they, they become sticky ends, so they tend to stick to those with a complementary sequence as there, as the uh, with the complementary uh, another end with the complementary sequence, and that is um, how how you actually piece together DNA. So this uh, single stranded tails. Uh, produced by the same restriction enzyme. Now take note that uh, different restriction enzymes will cut at different positions at different restriction sites. So in order to produce sticky ends that will stick to one another basically, uh, you need to cut it, cut those ends with the same restriction enzyme. You cannot cut, for example, gene A, you want to attach gene A to gene B. You cannot cut gene A with restriction enzyme 1 and then gene B with restriction enzyme 2. They won't stick together. Okay, so they are these the sticky ends are only sticky to the ends that are cut with the same restriction enzyme. Okay, now when you have two different DNA or DNA from two different organisms that are joined together by cutting and sticking them up together, you will form a recombinant DNA. By the way, aside from the restriction enzyme, there is another enzyme that glues the sticky ends together because again when whether even if the sticky ends stick together by themselves they are just bound together by hydrogen bonds and these are very weak so in order for the stick 
uh, the sticky ends to really be stuck together permanently, you need to form covenant bonds. And those are formed by DNA ligase. They are the glue. The basically molecular glue. Now, this is an example of cloning. Basically, you, for, you are forming a recombinant DNA. So, you cut them with a restriction site, a restriction enzyme. So, in this case, your restriction enzyme is called eco r one eco r one they are named based on the bacteria they come from and uh, the strain and then how the um, the order or rather um, <clears throat> the order where that restriction enzyme is discovered in that particular bacteria and strain. So, eco r one is from E. coli. So, this is uh, the restriction enzyme. So, they cut it this restriction enzyme. So, it only cuts at regions that have these sequences. And this is a palindromic sequence. So, how does it become a palindromic sequence? So, G, G, A, 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 T, 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 N, T, C, N, C. So, as you can see, whether you read them uh, from left to right or right to left, they are basically the same. So, that is your palindromic sequences. All restriction sites are palindromic sequences. Now, eco R1, the restriction enzyme will cut this. And then, you will produce, they do not cut, again, the cut here is asymmetrical. So, you will, uh, the cut is, you will produce sticky ends. So, for example, let's identify where the cut is. Oh, the first one at the upper side, this is G, between G and A, between G and A. So, the cut here, you will form overhang. So, these are unpaired bases, and they will look for their pairs, their complementary pairs. So, they become sticky. To their complementary pairs so there then you have another gene or the, this is a dna from another organism then cut with the same eco r1 and then as you can see since it's cut with the same eco r1 they should have the same or rather the complement of the other sticky ends so they have complementary bases so since they are complement they will stick together and then you will use the ligase to seal the nicks or the gaps because otherwise they will just be um, uh, they can be removed easily actually because they are hydrogen bonds. It's easy to a hydrogen bond is not that um, strong unlike your covalent bonds. Now that is for DNA cloning. So making recombinant uh, and actually this is just part. So making recombinant DNA is just the first step in DNA cloning which is the set of laboratory methods that uses living cells to mass produce specific DNA fragments. So, you cut the DNA into fragments by your restriction enzymes and then you stick them into vector, or rather insert them into vectors. These vectors, they can be cloning or expression vectors actually. So, cloning vectors, we just, as its name suggests, their main function is to basically create copies. Expression vectors are the vectors that if you want the gene to be expressed, you, ex you, you, cut, you, you put them in expression vectors. Anyway, so the, the, the cut DNA is inserted into your vectors that were cut also with the same enzyme. So the cloning vectors with the foreign DNA are placed in host cells and then they produce, uh, when, they, they, when they divide, they produce the clones and each clone should have a copy of the foreign DNA. That is ideal scenario. However, they are plasmids, so bacteria, bacterial cells does not always replicate a plasmid. So one good way to ensure that your plasmid or your vector is being replicated so you can create more and more copies is to introduce uh, a promoter and ORI site that will um, and, uh, promote the, uh, the replication of that plasmid. So anyway, that is for cloning vectors. For expression, it's slightly different because your objective in expression vectors is to express your um, is to express your gene and this is an example of an expression vector so this is a plasmid so plasmid is a dna so what you are seeing here the bio, the orange one is basically your dna this is a dna strand so a plasmid is just a small circular dna and this is a small circular dna and the expression vector has a certain regions that are important so you have your promoter region. The promoter region is the one that, uh, uh, if you remember your uh, transcription, translation, uh, gene expression video lecture. So the promoter is the one that tells the RNA polymerase where your the gene to be expressed is. So you need to have this promoter if you want to express your gene. And then you have the ampicillin. This is ampicillin resistance. Ampicillin is an antibiotic. 
So, this allows you to select which organism has that expression vector and which organism does not have this, that expression vector. Then, the oricyte. So, the oricytes, this is for the yeast and this is for bacteria. These are um, the origins of replication. This allows your, um, your plasmid to be replicated so that you will not lose your plasmid. So, it can be also be cloned when your bacteria replicates or your yeast replicates. So, you have your multiple cloning sites. So, the multiple cloning sites, when it, by its name, multiple. So, these are sites whereas you have many restriction sites from different uh, restriction enzymes. So, this allows that this plasmid can be used using any or en any of the restriction enzymes that have uh, that have a restriction site in that in this multiple cloning site. So you can use, like, for example, like ECO R1, PBR2, something like that. Okay, so if you have your cloning vector, you cut your chromosomal DNA, you insert your D chromosomal DNA into your vector, so you cut also the plasmid in order to insert them. And then this plasmid is inserted to your cell to your host cell so it us it's usually e coli but sometimes you use yeast so depending on your needs you use a certain organism so this uh this organism will be grown in a culture so when the the, the organism grows uh, into a colony and replicates so from a single organism that has uh your plasmid you will create a large large amount of basically a whole plateful colony of your uh, cells that have your cloned gene. So we will discuss in the next video about uh, complementary DNA.